Proving lines parallel. For completing this lesson, having a compass is going to be necessary. Make sure you get one before watching. What we're going to do is we're going to use our compass and a straight edge. We're going to make an angle, which is acute right and or obtuse, and then we're going to copy the angle. This can be found on page 31, or you could find it back in lesson one, or in chapter one. So here we go, let's copy an angle. We can copy any angle if it's obtuse, obtuse, right, or acute. First step, put your compass point on the angle that you're copying and draw an arc that crosses both of the sides. Now, without changing the settings on your compass, move the compass point from the vertex of that angle down to the vertex of the next angle that you're going to be creating. We're copying it, so what we do on one angle, we do the exact same thing on the other. I need to create this arc. Now I've created it. Now I go back to the first angle, and again, I need to copy something, so I'm going to put my point where my arc and my side cross, and I'm going to put my other piece where the other two cross. So you'll notice my compass point one end is located where the first side of the angle and my arc is located and the other side of my compass the pencil tip is on the other side of the angle where the arc and the, and the uh, side of the angle meet. If I was to draw an arc here notice how they cross now I'm going to go do the exact same thing on my other one. I'll put my point here and notice how my compass is way far away. That's not going to be a problem because all I need to do is draw this arc until it crosses my first one I created. It's going to be really large but that doesn't matter. All I care about is finding this location where my two arcs cross on my first picture. Now that I have that, I simply, starting at the vertex, I draw my ray through their intersection. I've now copied the angle. It'd be good to practice this because we're going to need this quite a bit in today's lesson and in tomorrow's lesson. Next, using our compass, we're going to make a line, done that with our straight edge, make another line, intersect it, we can do that with our straight edge, that will be called our transversal, the blue line. Next, we're going to copy an angle. The angle that we want to copy is located right here. We want to copy this angle so that it is down here through this purple point. So we're going to be drawing a line like this so that I have an angle here that's going to be the same as the angle here. It seems a little complicated, but you're doing exactly what you just did on the last slide. We start by getting our compass, putting the compass point at the vertex of the angle. My compass point is at the vertex of the angle and I'm going to simply draw an arc that crosses both sides, the blue side and the red side. Now this is a little bit easier to think of it as being a color-coded picture. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass, notice where the point is on the blue, I'm going to move it to the next point which is right here. I haven't changed the size at all and simply draw another arc that looks exactly like the first one. Now I put my compass point where the blue and the black meet, so the blue transversal, that uh, line, and the black arc. And now I want to set my compass so that it has that same exact size. So now one it's part one part of my compass is on the blue with the black arc and the other one is at the red with the black arc. We're copying so we want to put it on the same point of the other part of our that we're copying to. Put it right there. Draw yourself an arc and simply connect the dots. Now when you look at the picture you'll notice my angle right here has been copied to right here. We've now created
parallel lines cut by the blue transversal. Next, let's talk about some if-then, some conditional statements. We have, if the angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. What we learned before was, if we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So what this is, it's a converse. It, uh, we also can do this for alternate interior angles, congruent, then the lines are parallel. If alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And if consecutive interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. This will be extremely useful to prove lines parallel. We know why they're parallel, but here's a way that we can prove it mathematically why lines are parallel. We have a picture here. It says, find x so that m is parallel to n. So I want this line here, m, parallel to line n. We're not worried that the picture doesn't look like they're parallel. That really has nothing to do with what we're studying. All we want to do is figure out what can I do to prove this angle here, which is 3x plus 25, and this angle here, which is 6x plus 2, how could we use those two pieces to prove the lines are parallel? Before we can do anything, we must first identify what types of angles they are. Well, we should remember from our studies in sections 1 and 2 that those are consecutive interior angles. Well, let's look back. If the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, the lines are parallel. What we need to do is we need to prove that 3x, or show that 3x plus 25 plus 6x plus 2 equals 180 has a value of x in which this works. If we can find a value of x that makes this work, then we can say lines m and n are parallel. Let's try and finish the algebra here. 3x and 6x makes 9x plus 27 equals 180. So we have 9x equals 153. And if we divide by 9, we will see that x equals 17. What we can now say is that when x equals 17, line M is parallel to line N. Which lines are parallel? We have a lot of information going on in this picture. Let's make it a little bigger. So let's figure out which lines have to be parallel. What I would do if I'm faced with a question like this is see what information I can write on the picture given the fact that we know some angles. So we can say that this is 95, this middle angle is 95, therefore the one vertical to it would also be 95. I can do that a couple more times. Using vertical angles, I just put three additional angles onto my picture. Now I could also use something like a linear pair. Linear pairs of angles are supplementary. That way I can use the two angles right here. One of them is 95 and the other one then would have to be 85. The reason is they are linear pair of angles. Now we have the 85 for the bottom right. We can say the one in the top right Whoops, also has to be 85. The reason is they are a linear pair of angles. Now we can continue using that same strategy throughout the rest of the problem. 85 here, 85 here, 85 here, and 85 here. As we look at it, your first instinct would be to say that F, G, and H are all parallel. But we need to look a little closer. In this group of angles, notice I have 85 in the top left, 95 in the top right. 
if I go to my next group of angles, I have 95 in the top left and 85 in the top right. If I connect these up, I have 95 and 85 as corresponding angles. I have corresponding angles not congruent. If we look at our definite or if our if then conditional statements, if the correspondings are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Well, we have a situation where they are not congruent. Therefore, we cannot say that F and G are parallel. We need to look at another pair. Let's try the bottom left of line H and the bottom left of line F. These are both 95. Since they are congruent, we can say that F is parallel to H. The reason corresponding angles are congruent. One more question here. Which lines are parallel? Again, we have quite a bit of information going on in this picture, but we have to figure out which lines are parallel. There could be two parallel, there could be three parallel, or possibly there could be none. The first thing we need to do is use any of our prior knowledge to be able to fill in additional angle measurements. I'm going to use vertical angles in the center of the picture to say that this is 60 degrees. Well, I'm off to a good start. Next, notice how these three angles in the center of the picture, right here, make a straight line. We've learned before that a straight line measures 180 degrees. We can use that knowledge to say that angle, the two angles that make 127, the third angle then would have to be 57. Now we can use vertical angles a couple more times. 63 can go in the top right here of this group, and 57 can go in the bottom right. Now all of this may not be needed, but maybe it will be. We will see as we finish the problem. What other information could we use? Well, I notice I have a triangle here. I know angle 60, angle 60, and a missing angle in the bottom corner of this triangle over here where I just put the star. Well, we know that a triangle measures 180 degrees. Therefore, if two of the angles are 60, in order to make 180, this angle here would also have to be 60. Now we are left with one angle, and that is this angle up here where I've just placed the red dot. We can again use the fact that we have a triangle with two angles, one being 60, one being 63, the last angle would be 57. Now we need to figure out what information we could use to figure out if we have parallel lines. As I look at this picture, I have a line here. Whoops. I have line H and I have line F. They are cut by a transversal. 57 and 60 would be called alternate interiors. They are not congruent, so we know that F and H are not parallel. We've eliminated those two as a possibility. Now let's see if we could find a different pairing to find parallel lines. I'm going to go back again to angle H and to, a, to excuse me, line H and line G, and I'll use this transversal again. I have a 63 and I have a 57. While looking at that, those two would be called corresponding angles. The corresponding angles are not congruent. Therefore, H would not be parallel to G. Our last possibility would be to try and do G and H, or excuse me, G and F. Well, if I again create my transversal, I could compare 57 and 60. They would be called corresponding. They are not congruent, 
So we can say that f is not parallel to g. Which of these lines are parallel in this picture? The answer is actually none. You'll have lots of practice with this when we get to our accelerated math. Make sure you have your notes completed and bring them to me if you have any questions.